So we built our model. It's doing what we think we should do. Now we want to analyze that model, right? So for instance, we might ask if we hold broadcast influence constant, what is the effect of different social influence values on the total adoption rate for each type of agent? In fact, maybe holding all the other parameters constant, what's the effect of changing social influence on the different, on the different adoption rates, right? Um, so we could look at that, right? We could look at plotting um, as we vary social influence, how that affects adoption by influentials versus regulars, right? Before we think about that, I wanna mention a couple of things, right? So, First of all, when it comes to agent-based models, these models are stochastic. Even as we saw running them, you get slightly different results every time. Therefore, a lot of times it's important to actually run the model multiple, multiple times in order to kind of understand whether something was a one-time phenomenon or whether something that is repeatable, right? You may also want to be able to systematically alter an input parameter, for instance, the social influence, right? Then take the data from multiple runs with different social influence values and analyze those in some interesting way, right? And in fact, NetLogo has a tool built in called Behavior Space that allows you to run these kind of experiments. Um, once you have those experiments and all that data, you're gonna need a way to analyze it. You can use almost any statistical package that's out there to analyze data output by NetLogo, Excel, SAS, R. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit about how to analyze it in R. So I'm going to stop now and we're going to show you how to actually run the experiment and then I'll show you how to pull the, the model into R, okay, the data into R. So let's open up Behavior Space. Right, and Behavior Space starts with just a blank set of experiments. We're going to create our new experiment, which we'll call our social influence experiment. And right away you'll notice that NetLogo automatically pulls in all the parameters you've defined so that you can then vary any of them, right? Um, and what we want to vary is we want to vary this social influence parameter. And it's set to 0.5 and we could just enter a bunch of values or we can enter a pattern that we want NetLogo to use. And the pattern is defined down here, it's a start, increment, and end. So let's say we want social influence to go from 0.1 um, by 0 0.1 increments to 1.0, right? So we'll look at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and so forth. We'll leave all the others the same. I'm actually gonna increase the number of agents above what we have in the default uh, to 100 just to give us a few more agents in the model and allow a little bit more of the stochasticity to be averaged out over a higher number of agents. Uh, we'll leave the fraction influential still at 30%. We'll leave the network as random uh, with a density. Uh, maybe we'll lower that density down a little bit um, to 0.3 rather than 0.5 just to give us a more structure to the network. The next thing we have to decide is how many repetitions, how many times do we want NetLogo to run the model for each of the different uh, input parameters. Uh, and for now, I'm just going to set it to 10 so it'll run it 10 times. And then we have to figure out how many um, runs we want or what measures we want a NetLogo to report. And essentially what we're trying to do in this model is we're trying to just reproduce the graph, right? But over many, many runs. So let's count um, turtles with adopted, which is in the graph, count regulars with adopted, and just space this out to so make it easier to read, and then count influentials with adopted, right? Uh, and we're going to measure runs at each step because we're actually interested in the incremental adoption rate. We're not interested in the, the overall adoption rate. We know it's eventually going to be 100% adoption. That's just the way the model's set up. So we're going to leave that on. Set up and go. Just tell it how to run the model. Uh, we could, uh, for instance, use our reset innovation, our reset diffusion command here uh, to cause it to do some different things, right? We could have it set up right away and then reset the diffusion on the same network or things like that. But for now, we're just gonna use the standard setup. And then the time limit is, um, if, if you don't know if the model's gonna stop, you can set a time limit as a backup, right? Um, it, you know, you can always set it as like a thousand or something like that. In our case, we know the model will eventually stop because eventually everyone will adopt, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, you can also have some stop conditions and some final commands uh, for a NetLogo to run, but we're not gonna use either of those this time. 
Once you hit OK, you'll then see um, your experiment here, and it'll tell you how many runs. It's 100 runs, which makes sense because we're looking at 10 values of social influence and 10 iterations each, right? Uh, we can then hit the Run button, and uh, it'll ask us whether we want spreadsheet or table output. I like table output. That's a column-based uh, column output format, so I'll turn that on. It will also take advantage if you have multiple cores, it'll run your um, the code multiple times in the background um, so you don't see it. It's only gonna visualize one of them because it'll only visualize one at a time, but it'll run it across many. Then we can okay, and then it'll ask us where we wanna save the data. So I'll just save it to uh, the desktop in this case, right? Um, and then it'll start running the model each of those different times, right? Um, and when it does that, um, it'll display the one run, but you're gonna see it's gonna jump a bunch because in the background it's able to run many more. In fact, if you want to run faster, you can turn off update view and update plots, and it'll quickly go through all the model runs. And there's stuff did all the model runs already. Um, uh, in some future talks, I'll talk a little bit about how to run this behavior, uh, headless, um, and you can always look at that in the documentation. I'll always mention that at future times. Uh, but now that we have that, now we have our data, now we have to analyze. So that's the next step.